I'm going to talk about someone else service. That's a topic which I am going to explain later. So I'm Chatu Vishwajit. I'm from Sri Lanka and I'm also your ambassador. And you can find me this handle almost everywhere except Instagram. So serverless. I'm going to explain you what is actually serverless. When I say serverless, it's like this. What? You say no servers? So yeah. Is that all zero or the other company running without servers? No. So let's talk about what is serverless computing. If the word is actually about serverless computing, not the serverless just a word. So like a buzzword used to get some people going on. So if we are going with the quick history, how it happened? So it is like companies started to own their own servers. So they started creating jobs for network engineers, load balancing and everything else was there. And so they run their own physical servers, which is a kind of really missed even come to patches and maintaining the servers. So it need additional stuff rather than your main business goal. You may be creating your own application, but you need to create have another set of staff to just to maintain the servers. Why is that? So then people started to use their own idle servers as a cloud and charge it for about hourly basis. So yeah, it cuts the bill about a considerable amount and the maintenance costs also get less down and you can actually have less number of staff to run it. But you need to set up the servers, which is you need to know about DevOps. Yeah, yeah. I hate DevOps, yeah, that. But you need to know that if you are running on cloud, you need to know, know about how to set up the server, how to set up the base image, install the dependencies, maintaining it, scale it, everything, yeah, it's sort of hard. So, then a company claims that we can do DevOps for you. So they call us platform as a service. So like Heroku and you know, many other things you may know, even from AWS itself, there's a platform as a service from there, like uh, Beanstack, Beanstock. So companies evolved to the past, but still not enough. So they the you know, rest of the people come with uh, software as a service then. So we will give the mailing service as a service. We are giving SMS or messaging service as a service. So you don't need to set up your service or your application. You just use our API. And we are going to charge a little bit for it. So new business is going on. Then people came. Why don't we give a server as a service? So we set up everything the Spark structure and everything, and you just need to put your code and we do the magic for you. So this concept has a buzzword called serverless. Some people call it cloud functions. Some people call it as microservices. Some people call it as a function as a service. So whatever is it actually, it's a, just a server and it has everything that required for your use case, pre-setups. And another thing is actually, it auto scales, support auto scaling, and you don't need to pay for your idle cost. So if your application is not much used in night time or some time phases, we are in normal cloud cases, you just keep your service running on. But when it comes to serverless, it only charge for the request, just fire it up and do the task and for the, that amount of time that took for the task, they only charge for that one. So that is actually serverless. It's still someone else's servers. Only thing is you need no not need to pay the idle cost plus it support auto scaling. So whatever number of requests you are coming, the server will be scaling and do the tasks for you. And you don't need to learn about DevOps. You don't need to maintain the servers. You don't need to check about updates. 
patches, yeah, everything is going on. So what are the examples of these platforms supporting this one? So ADFs used Lam Lambda, which was the earliest in this game. Uh, it was called early as JAWS, later it became the Lambda. And Cloud Function from Google, it has Google Cloud Function plus it has Cloud Function from Firebase. So yeah, they joined the bandwagon. And Azure from Microsoft, they have their own functions. So they also joined as this one. And the last time the, the web task, IO from O0 joined. So you may think that if I'm going to write an application in these things, it's like you are depending on these platforms. But there's an open source project called serverlot.js where you can use it and make it the provider with the settings. Then you can actually run your serverless function in it, almost this all four services. So if you're going to start with webtask IO, you just need to uh, npm install the WT CLI just globally and next command will be about anything. So you just WT init with your email ID going to give a account just from the command line sign up in there and this is just a hello world. We just export the module with the callback function and just it joins into the normal file and for running you just type create it. WT create with your application the file. So yeah. This is really painful. <laughs> no no this is not that hard. So there's another way. If you're not like a fan like me in command line, <laughs> there's an Web editor, you just type WT edit. It going to give you this URL, which is going to be look like this. So this is the editor. So let's get at some demos. Let's make this zoomable. I hope you can all read it, right? So this is the basic editor from WebTask.io. It's supposed not 8.0 and you can just type your normal JavaScript in here and you can serve it in like in here or just an endpoint. So I have a small application uh, which uses its own uh, web task your storage. You can store, store JSON content. If I run this, let's see, first run this and then I explain it. So it gives a tip, says serverless is cost effective. So if I want to put another data in here, so I just get a post request. Okay. Maybe, I'm not sure. So it said saved, which is from this part of the code. So if I see again with a get request, or you can go to directly to this site. So it's add all the, the tips that I posted already. And let's get into a little bit easy example than this one to explain. So this is the normal hello world that I explained it. So it has about function, a normal function with a callback. So you just send whatever the thing that you need to output in here. Or you can go like a little bit more like running a total express server in the endpoint. And you can even write your own mailgun to just send an email. So many possibilities are there. Even you can run Stripe payment. So if I go to this URL, 
can just have an endpoint to spell out. So just my API is invalid. So if I play it, it's going to give my anyway, it's going to open it in uh, test mode. So it's going to be like that. So every endpoint is just an JavaScript endpoint. You can put whatever you like, Express or whatever no, you normally write in Node.js. You can put it, and uh, all the dependencies also you can installable from here. You just go to there, and you can see the all the npm dependencies, and you can actually install whatever you the most other dependencies you want in your project. If I move to the presentation again, uh, these are the limitations currently with the Web Plus IO. Is it free? Yes, it's free. Uh, there's a soft limit of one request per second, but it's a just a soft request. I tried more than that, so it's working. And uh, 30 seconds of the execution limit. And you can uh, set up trend count of schedules, which I'm going to explain what is actually this part, the cron schedules. And for every code file, it has a limit of 100 KB of for task. And 400 KB of the JSON storage if you are going to use it, rather than using normal MongoDB or whatever you, you are breaking. And for resources, you can go to webtask.io slash docs. Let's get into the webtask cron. What is this webtask cron is here? So if task cron is actually a it's a normal kind of a Linux cron tab, but your serverless endpoint will be called these given times that you set up. So you can set up a times period that you want, like in here, in scheduler, or you can use it in the command line also from the WT. CLI, you can schedule an endpoint to call on a given time, in a given time zone, just like a cron tab. So they, every time the setup will be fired from here, or you can actually have kind of a hooks, like from Stripe, a hook from to call and web plus endpoint. So these kind of things are possible from here. And that's all for my presentation, and let's move to the questions. <laughs> I hope my time is going well. You are well ahead. Um, right, let's go. Oh. <laughs> Who's yeah. my phone inside? Just talking to the black bit. OK. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Uh, so uh, one question. So, so um, what I haven't quite understood with the serverless is, uh, um, what about state? I saw you were having, you are saving something. So the storage is separate from uh, these functions in some way. So the storage will remain until your yeah. next function. Yeah, storage actually in in web browser your storage actually just JSON storage, which is a persistable storage apart from the idle time. Okay. So it is only endpoint then it is only going to charge for the endpoint call, but not for the storage, actually. In here, it is actually free, totally free. Anybody else? And you can actually uh, connect to your MongoDB or normal database back in there, and only when you call, it's get updated in the database, still there. Okay. Others? Come once. Thank you very much. Yeah. Thank you very much for uh, welcoming us in here.